Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is actually going to be my review for Love and Hip Hop New York, and this is season six, it's episode three. We start right out with, um, right where we left off with Amina and that goddamn Peter Guns and that stupid ass goddamn Tar. Now, Amina has smacked the shit out of Peter and threw the phone at him and all of that. I didn't understand how she had walked past Tara without smacking the fuck out of her because she really deserved it because she was talking too much shit and fucking her husband and, and just being Tara. You know, that, that whole, their whole situation gets on my nerves. But she walked out and she had left Tara alone. Tell me how the fuck or why the fuck did Tara find her way into the hallway talking shit to Amina? Now they're having this exchange. Amina, they're rushing Amina, pushing Amina into the the uh, elevator, and her and Tar is going back and forth. Why is this even going on, Tar? Why do you even have your motherfucking monkey ass even out here in this hallway, fucking with her? Bitch, she done left you alone. She didn't even get into it with you, but you out here mad because she pregnant. Y'all are so stupid. Y'all are mad about all the wrong things. Y'all mad at each other. And this motherfucker sitting over here look like an old goddamn leather wallet. Is right in the middle. Y'all mad at the wrong people. And really and truly at this, this juncture, you two dumb bitches should be mad at yourselves. You should be mad at yourselves. Throw both of yourselves in the garbage. You Both of you bitches are stupid. Absolutely stupid. You can't find another dick. I know in all of New York, Peter Guns ain't got the best dick in all of New York. I, nobody's going to make me believe that. No one's going to make me believe that. I'll visit New York, and I promise you, I won't sample any of Peter Guns' dick. None of it. I wouldn't have it. So I don't know what the problem is. Amina knows she ain't the best looking person. Tara knows you ain't the best looking person. Neither one of you bitches are the best. But goddamn, y'all could do better than Peter Guns. It's ridiculous. And I mean, they're just literally having an exchange. Tara's literally pissed because she's pregnant. Well, we know going forward, she fixed that. She went on and got pregnant her motherfucking self, but that's to come. Anyway, so I'm just reporting on what I see. Right now, we're going to go on with the fact that uh, dumbass Amina's pregnant. And Amina... I don't know what you're going to do, baby. She ended up contacting her sister. Her sister came on there from Germany. And it's so funny to look at the two of them. But they're twins. but And they really do look exactly alike. Um, if Amina's hair was black, her and her sister, the sister actually, I think, is actually a little better looking. I think it's that mouth of Amina's, this mess. But um, anyway, if I was Amina... When nobody knew about that baby but me and the motherfucking doctor. That's it. Nobody else would have known. Moving on. Because I'm done with them. Fuck them. Yorma and that goddamn DJ self. And I think I kind of like this Yorma. She got a little shit with her. She's crying and shit. And I didn't know if I was going to like her. I was like, I saw this crying shit last week. But that Yorma, she's she's a little hot blood bitch. And I said, okay, I kind of like that. But anyway, she's in there dealing with him, and she's fussing at him. This was where I was saying she was stupid. But she's fussing with him about him not taking her out public. If you're in a relationship with a person, or you think you're in a relationship with a person, because that's what you're doing, you're thinking that your ass is in a relationship with a person, and you have it in your mind that there's a problem with them taking you around their friends and their family or taking you out publicly. You're not in a relationship. You're not in a relationship. You're being fucked in more ways than one. Okay? So, that's really stupid. That's really stupid. But I, I do kind of like her still. I still kind of like her. She got a little fire to her. But there's no way that anybody, it could be the worst looking bitch in the world, should be fussing with a motherfucker to take them public. Okay, um, and like I said, I that DJ self stuff for some reason I don't know what it is. Don't judge me. He's kind of cute to me. He just you know his face, his face. I ain't really got with the rest of him just yet, but his face is cute to me, but not cute to the point where he's pulling this shit that he's pulling. 
Now, if that motherfucker was running around looking like Mandeces, that's something different. I might can understand some of the shit going on and some people going for the shit because Mandeces' ass is sharp. He not cute like that. But he got a whole lot of bullshit going on like he real, real cute. So, just craziness. But she was fussing about that. And he says, oh, don't worry about it, baby. I'm going to take you to this party. Because that stinking ass Mariah Lynn is having a party. So, he's going to take her out to Mariah Lynn's birthday party. And that was basically, excuse me, hey, baby, tired. I'm sorry, y'all. You're take, don't they really have tired me out with their bullshit. And he's going to take her to Mariah Lynn's party. And, uh. That's going to be their little coming out party. Whatever. Okay. So, next we got Yandy sitting down. And I was really bothered with this. Yandy just sat her ass down with Mo of BBOD. You know, Mo had it out with Raw last week. Now she's sitting with Yandy. Yandy basically gives her very much of She don't feel like Raw is even qualified to be doing them, and I mean, it was kind of like a business thing, but it was real shady, real shady, real shady of Yandy, because you're going through all these changes, you got the little chicken noodle soup child, Bianca, who's going to do fine, and now you want to manage them too, you being greedy, and you clowning, and you know they going to clash, you ain't doing nothing but welcome in some bullshit, and it was so funny, because we all sat and watched that ugly ass Mo thing, um, thing one, actually started all that shit, and Yandy, bitch, you seen all that, you seen all that, bitch, you're just being greedy, she's being greedy, and she know that Bianca will run after her, that was, I told y'all, the whole thing, she wanted Bianca to run after her, which was raunchy and shady, see, every time I think I kind of like you, Yandy, you do some fucked up shit, moving on, let me go on and finish Yandy, because I don't, I ain't gonna want to talk about it no more, because she pissed me off, um, we got the whole thing going on with Mandy's and all of that. And um, they basically, she met, Mandisi's and her had a little scene where they met with Remy Ma and Papoose. And they all sat down and had dinner. And they basically were talking about the reality of what's actually getting ready to happen. And I think some of it set in. You know, Remy was saying Papoose was the same way as Yandy with this let's live for the day bullshit. And she's like, um, hello, the reality is. So I think Yandy kind of, it kind of, gave Yandy a, a better perspective of what's to come. Like, bitch, really stop. It's really not a fairy tale. It's really not a game. This is real shit. So I think she kind of got it. So that was kind of good for them to actually have that meeting. Then we actually got to see Mandisi's talking to little Mandisi. He's just cute too. Um, basically reassuring him that I'm your dad. I am not walking away from you if I happen not to be around. Don't let nobody tell you no bullshit. He was basically putting his son down with gang. This is what's going on. You kind of know what's, what we got going on. Don't let no motherfucker tell you nothing about me. Bam. That kind of thing. I was there for that. I was there for that because a motherfucker will come in and try to poison your motherfucking kids' mind about you. Motherfuckers that are haters will do that. I've lived it. I've seen it. You ain't got to do a goddamn thing to nobody. Motherfuckers who are haters. Are you hearing me good? Haters. They're haters. And they can be hating on you for any any set of reasons. You ain't got to have that because I ain't got a motherfucking thing, okay? Just a motherfucker that hates the fact that you're the shit. Because to them, I was the shit. Come right in there and poison your children in their ear about you. It sounds deep. Trust me, motherfuckers do it. And it'll be your family members. <laughs> another video for another time. Anyway, moving the fuck on. Mandisi's was putting that down. Letting little Mandisi's know, don't matter what nobody say, daddy loves you, daddy ain't walk away from you, daddy ain't made no choice not to be in your life, and don't let no motherfucker tell you no different. I like that. I was there with that. That, that got me right in it. I was there. I was there for that. Anyway, so moving on. Still pissed off with Yandy because you you doing some shady shit, some shady business shit. But whatever, Yandy. We'll get back with you later. That motherfucker from Ryan Lynn. This bitch is just... I don't like her. I just put that one out there. I don't like her. I don't like her. The bitch is basic. She's a basic back-of-the-bus type of bitch. I just don't like her. She, she's just unnecessary to me. 
just trying too hard to be relevant, and she's just not. She's in there rapping, and I'm like, fuck she talking about? Just, it just ain't. All the, all the blocks ain't in the box. I just don't. I don't, I don't like her. Anyway, I just think she's just ridiculous. I really do. So she's in there rapping with DJ Self and all this bullshit. He's teasing her about Rich. He asked her, do you know Rich Dolls must have had something going on? You know, because why is he hosting your birthday party or whatever? She said, oh, yeah, me and Richie D, this, that thing, and the other. And basically, she basically, I'm going to paraphrase here. You know, in the spill it boy way. Basically, no, me and Richie D ain't never been together. We've never been a couple. But he does fuck me from time to time. Boom. And I'm happy with it. I'm cool with it. You know, that's her. Real. What the fuck is this bitch talking about? Yeah, but Richie fucks me from time to time and I'm good with it. Ridiculous. Anyway, so then Cardi B brings her good ghetto ass up in there. She's just loud and ghetto. She is. I mean, it's one of them things. When I first seen her, I was just like, whoa, who the fuck is this clown? You know, now I'm kind of like, all right, here comes the clown. You know, it's cool. Like, I, I'm cool now. I didn't know if I was going to like her. I didn't know if I was going to be able to handle her. She is really, I mean, she is truly an extra from um, American Horror Story Freak Show. She really is. Um, she's just loud and wrong, you know. But it's cool. I'm getting used to, to, to seeing her. So, here, uh, 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 sitting in the clowns. She come on in there. She meets Mariah Lynn. They kind of hit it off. They cool. You know, they, they was cool. And they both was on the same page. I was like, I kind of like that bitch. I kind of like her. Cool. She invites her to the party. Then she actually spills the bean and asks her, well, why, ain't, why wasn't you at the Gwyneth Fest? Cardi's like, oh, wait a minute, motherfucker. Now, so she's going at DJ Self because he never even told her. Whole point is, he tries to keep her away. He don't want to hear her music. He don't want to deal with her on, a, on a, a business level. He just wants to keep fucking her. Period. Ain't trying to have you near nothing. Ain't trying to have you near nobody. Just want to stick a little dick in you every now and again and keep it moving. That's it. And she kind of like called him on like, motherfucker, really? You think you're going to keep fucking me? And I'm trying to do something here. And she's like, either we're going to make some music or we ain't going to make no music. You know, I'm like, okay, bitch, I'm with you, clown. You know, push your red wig back, bitch, and let him know what's going on. So I was there for that. So that was that. So he said, you know, he told Mariah, like, why the fuck you put me on front street and shit, bitch? You know? But he said, I'm going to make it my business to figure it out. Because I can't have Yorma and Cardi B up in the same place. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make sure that Cardi B got something else to do. So he had got it all together to make sure Cardi B wasn't going to be available for the party. Because he ain't want no shit. Okay. Boom. And we'll come back to them. Uh, Lexi and Mo, They meet up. They sitting talking. They ain't seeing eye to eye. Mo basically, thing one tells thing two. I went to see Yandy, and uh, Yandy don't feel like Raw is even qualified to be managing us. I think we need to go sit down and talk to Yandy. Thing two's like, why would you do that? Why would you go talk to Yandy? Raw is our manager. We just fix whatever the problem is and we keep it moving. You know, she's done some things for us. We owe her to give her a chance and just fix this and keep it moving. Thing one's like, fuck you, bitch. She's your friend. She's not my friend. The bitch is shady. She made me feel some kind of way and I ain't trying to deal with her like that. Yandy, I think it's going to be our better bet. They ain't seeing eye to eye at all. But thing one does agree to sit down in a meeting with Thing 2, her, and Raw to try to figure things out. So, and after that, the next time we see them, Thing 1 and Thing 2 are actually out of rehearsal and they're singing. Rehearsal with some dancers this song. fa 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 I said, baby, y'all might as well be doing a duet with that motherfucker, Ho Celine. It was just ridiculous. And Ho Celine could really fit right in. They could just make a fierce old duet at it. It was just ridiculous. They just kept going on with it. And I just said, what the fuck is this shit here? It's horrible. And it did. When they were singing it, it just sounded like two vampires with a lisp. 
Tata Talisha, Tata Talisha, that bitch is Tata Talisha, I said, child, if y'all don't get to fuck all out of here with that bullshit, it was horrible, so anyway, Raw comes in, they sit down, they talk, thing one gets to tell him, Raw, you know, you made me feel some kind of way, so I went and I seen Yandy, and Yandy doesn't feel as though you, you are the best management for us, Raw was like, wait a minute, bitch, hold it, hold it, hold it, let me tell you something, you out of order, because you done took our business on outside. We didn't have a disagreement, and you done ran on out in the street with our business. I'm bitch. That ain't how business is done. And this is what I'm going to do for you. And now I, get, I, I was living for raw with this, because the bitch is standing in her face telling her about how she don't think she's qualified to even be doing the business for her. Raw gave her very much of this. Now, if you thought Raw was really thirsty, because that's what Yandy really led everybody to believe, that Raw wasn't good for this, and she was thirsty, she gave her very much of, well, okay, be it as though you think that I'm not the person for you, and then you went and you've been disloyal to me, bitch. You've been disloyal to me. You know, you, I, I'm offended. She said, I'm offended professionally as well as personally. So what I'm going to do for you, Bitch, y'all go on and y'all find y'all manager, and I hope everything with Yandy works out for you. Now, she kind of, you know, she took a little jab at Yandy, but again, that's all right, all's fair, love and war. And I was like, all right, girl, I don't know about that, because, you know, Yandy got some receipts, but all right, girl. But she gave her very much. The last thing Yandy did was Jim Jones, girl, really seriously. But anyway, who's the last person you did? But, you know, that's not neither here nor there. But in the grand scheme of things, I lived for the fact that Raw was like, fuck y'all. I don't need y'all $10. Y'all keep it moving. And just literally, she fired her motherfucking self and gave them the motherfucking get on. She paid their asses dust. I felt kind of bad for Lexi because Lexi is really, she's really uh, down for Raw. But Raw did the best thing. She really did. And paid them dust. And I kiki my motherfucking ass off. I lived for that. I thought that was really, really cool. But she told them, uh, and Lexi said, well, what about our, our single release party that we was doing? She said, what about it? Girl, I'm done. Y'all can figure it out. But I'm done. I ain't qualified. See ya. I'm taking my toys and I'm leaving the playground. I thought that was the shit. So that, that didn't seem all that thirsty to me. She packed up her shit and rolled. I liked it. Anyway, moving on. So we go to Mariah Lynn's birthday party. Like I said, I got to see another dose of this Mariah Lynn. Don't like her. Very basic, very trashy, very unnecessary. She literally is sitting in a party. She's telling Richie that she ain't happy with her management. Now, he's already read her last week in the confessional, or two weeks ago in the confessional, Give it very much. I don't think she's talented at all. But she's telling him she, she's interested in him managing her. He says, you know what? He's going to just go around it. Yeah, bitch. Okay, no problem. I'm hosting this party tonight. Tonight's your birthday. Let's just deal with that. And let's just, we'll deal with that other shit later. I don't want to be bothered. So she's like, all right, cool. No problem. And then the next thing I know for the next 10 minutes, she's sitting there basically trying to convince him to fuck her. At the party. Really? Really? I guess that's what the girls do now. I, I don't understand it. Whatever. And he's like, you want me to? I said, yeah, bitch. You heard her. She wants you to run on up in her at the party. You did it before. You did it with Diamond. Fucked her right in that restaurant. So you might as well take her back in one of them bathrooms and slide that little ding dong up in her sideways and get it popping. Anyway, before he could get the chance to be nasty and wet up his little ding dong with her little nasty box, he went ahead on. And um, we had a little issue because Cardi B just showed up. And so Mariah Lynn jump up and they go back and forth. You know, everything's cool. Hey, baby, thank you for coming. It's all good. You look good. Titties is on fleek. This, that, and blah, 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 blah. They go on, and Cardi's loud with her crooked tooth and all. You know, all her clownage. I said, Lord, here we go. American Horror Story Freak Show. Let's go. So, Mariah Lynn, in her confessional, messy bitch, 
Oh, yeah, well, Cardi's here, so I'm going to just go ahead and try to make sure I keep her and DJ Self and this girl apart. First thing she do, walk her over there by where they are. and said, girl, let me call. I'll be right back, but you got to go do something. Left her standing right there. As soon as that bitch turned around, bam, there's Yorma and DJ Self. Well, you know, Car Cardi B is ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. That bitch said, oh, I got to take care of this Cardi B style. I said, I said, what is this clown getting ready to do? She rolled her motherfucking monkey ass right on up over there. What's good? This, that, thing, and the other. And, you know, Yorma was right away. She, you know, she, Yorma, Yorma knows she got a hoe. She knows she's dealing with a hoe. She know in her mind that he's fucking people. And she knows it. She knows. So I, I don't feel bad for her in that account. And... Her and Cardi B immediately start having an exchange. She's like, what's up with, with her? You know? And she all but called Cardi B a clown. You know what I mean? And they get to going back and forth. She's like, who is she? What's up with her? She said, who am I? I'm the girl whose pussy he been eating. He eats my pussy out. He's been eating my pussy out. He ate my pussy out the other day. I said, oh. And so... Yorma's like, well, he eats my pussy out, too, every day. And they're going back and forth, and I'm like, you're not looking so cute to me right now, DJ Self, you nasty motherfucking lap licker. You know, you're running around here munching everybody's box. Okay, so they're going back and forth, and then she's like, so you you eating her pussy out? You know, and he's like, wait, what, 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 and Cardi B's like, Yes, bitch, he eats my pussy out. Yes, I used to fuck with him, bitch, and I'm still fucking with him, bitch. And then she went, reached on over there and popped Yorma. And they got the rolling. They, Johnny got the fighting and hair pulling. And I said, well, well, okay. American Horror Story Freak Show. That goddamn Cardi B ain't got no goddamn chill. None. And so that was the thing. They, that's the last day we saw them two fighting. They pulling their asses apart. And I guess when we come back next week, we'll continue with them two fight. It was just ridiculous. She literally, Cardi B, went over there and she knew she was going to start fighting. Her little feelings was hurt. And, you know, about him being in there with that girl. And she, fuck it, I'm going to go over there and fight her. She ain't another girl for a can of paint. I said, oh my. Absolute clown. Absolute clown. But she is going to make the show absolutely worth watching. She is a good old hot ass goddamn mess. Hot ass ghetto ass mess. Anyway, that's it. That's all that basically went on. It was enough. It was enough. I was like, all right, y'all done tired me out. And y'all see I was yawning earlier. It tired me out. That damn Cardi B, she is a whole lot to handle. But I can see that I'll be eating her up. I'll be letting her have it from week to week. But I'll be tuning in every week to see what that bitch is going to do next. She'll be that girl. That girl that you, that you love to see act the way you don't want her to act, honey. It is what it is. That's what makes a reality show. All right, y'all. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Y'all know how that works. I'll see you guys next week. Y'all take care. Bye, y'all.